Hi, I'm Gareth and in this video we're going to have a think about this matter of dealing with inessential notes. Now first of all let's be clear what we mean by this. When we want to harmonize a melody such as this obviously we want to look for chords. Okay well first of all which key are we in? We've got three sharps so we could be in A major or we could be in the relative minor F sharp minor. Let's have a quick look through the piece. Well the first thing is I can see quite a few accidentals. Accidentals could be telling us a number of things actually. They could be telling us we're moving to another key. So it might be modulating during the course of a piece that's fundamentally in A major. It could be that some of these accidentals are chromatic notes that are just sort of decorating and colouring the melody in some way. But they also could be indicating a minor key. So if we were in F sharp minor, which are the accidentals we're most expecting to see? Well, in the harmonic minor, we're going to raise the seventh degree of the scale. So that's going to be E being raised to E sharp. If we're in the melodic minor scale, we might be raising the sixth as well as the seventh degree of the scale, normally in an ascending context. So the sixth degree is D, so D is going to turn into D sharp. We've already talked about the seventh degree turning into E sharp. On the descent, well, maybe it's going to be E natural and D natural. So those would be the clues that would be indicating F sharp minor. Now, when we look through this piece, here we meet in the second bar, the second measure, E sharp and D sharp. So they would qualify, wouldn't they? We've got E sharp over here. Um, we've got another E sharp over here. So there's quite a lot indicating F sharp minor. You might say, well, hang on a minute, there's an A sharp over here. Well, maybe the A sharp is about something else that's not about the key, because remember these other possibilities for what accidentals might be telling us. But quite a lot of this, all but one of the accidentals, is suggesting the possibility of F sharp minor. We finish on two F sharps. That's doesn't have to finish on the tonic of a key, but it's a definite possibility. It starts on an F sharp. So really, we can be pretty conclusive about the fact that this is a melody in F sharp minor. OK, so now we need to think about chords in F sharp minor. So if you're doing that, you want to maybe you can either think this if you're fairly fluent in chords. If you're less fluent, write out the scale of F sharp harmonic minor, put the third and the fifth above each of the notes of the scale, number it in Roman numerals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course, number eight is back to number one because they're the same notes effectively. Then you've got your chords. OK, when you want to harmonize the melody, well, those are the essential chords, what we call the diatonic chords, the chords that belong to that key, in this case, F sharp minor. And you'll be going through the melody thinking, well, which chords are going to fit what? The trouble with this melody is you look at it and it's quite busy, isn't it? We've got all these quavers or eighth notes flying all over the place. So we won't want to put a chord under every single one of those notes. If we do put a chord that fits with every single one of those notes, then we're treating every single note as if it were a harmony note. In other words, a note that belongs to the chord. So if I'm in F sharp minor and I look at this first bar, well, I could harmonize it by thinking one, five, one, four, one, four, one. For example, I could do that. But it's going to sound a bit ridiculous if I have such a fast rate of chord change, what we call the harmonic rhythm. If I've got chords going all the way at this speed, one and two and one and one, it's a oh, cracky, that's just too fast, isn't it? So I will want a slower harmonic rhythm. In other words, the rate of chord change is going to be slower than the rhythm of the melody. But how do I do that? Because all these notes are different, they all need different chords. This is where inessential notes come in. In other words, inessential notes are the notes that are called non-harmony notes, the notes that don't belong to the chord. So we've got inessential notes like upper auxiliary notes. So if I put down the tonic chord of F sharp minor and my melody just goes up a note and comes back again, 
that's called an upper auxiliary note. Now the F sharp that I'm playing at the top of this belongs to this chord one in F sharp minor. So if I go up to G sharp, well the G sharp doesn't belong to the chord, it clashes with it, doesn't it? But if I'm starting with F sharp in the melody and I go up to G sharp and come back, I regard the G sharp as an inessential note. And in this case, it's called an upper auxiliary note. Or I could go the other way. Say I went from F sharp, same chord, but the, this time my melody goes F sharp, E sharp, F sharp. That's a lower auxiliary note. So auxiliary notes, one kind of inessential note. We also have notes called passing notes sometimes called passing tones in the American system, uh, where I might have a chord of F-sharp minor, and say the first note is F-sharp, so that belongs to the chord. Then I have my G-sharp, and then I go to A. Well, when I get to A, that also belongs to chord one in F-sharp minor. So the first F-sharp does, the A does. The G-sharp is just passing in between two harmony notes. Okay, so the G sharp is an inessential note, but this time it's called a passing note or a passing tone. If you write passing notes, they've got to pass by step. You can't be leaping around the landscape. And if you know your auxiliary notes and your passing notes, well, you're most of the way to understanding inessential notes. So it's not as complicated as some people like to pretend it might be. We also have other things like anticipatory notes. What does that mean? Well, say I've got a couple of chords. So I'm going to go five, seven, one. And I've got a melody going G sharp, F sharp. Well, say my melody wants to anticipate the final F sharp. So I put my five, seven down with a G sharp at the top, and then I anticipate F sharp while I'm still playing the chord five. So you can see the F sharp, you can hear it clashes, can't you? But it's just anticipating that F sharp that's going to be repeated as I change the chord to chord one, which fits with the F sharp. So you could have auxiliary notes going up or down. You can have passing notes. You can have anticipatory notes. There are other things you can have, but those are the really essential ones. When it comes to these passing notes and certain other inessential notes, if they happen between beats, well, they're called unaccented. If they happen on a beat, they're called accented, and accented will always be stronger. So for example, if I'm doing a passing note, like this F sharp, G sharp, A thing, where the G sharp's a passing note, if I slip the G sharp between the beats, you kind of hear it, but it's not over significant. However, if I put it on the beat, it will be stronger. So you can hear what's that, so I'll just do that again because the bass note moved for some reason. <laughs> so if I do this, you can hear that it's on the beat, therefore it's stronger. That's an accented passing note. Okay, so unaccented, off the beat, a bit gentler. Accented, on the beat, a little bit stronger. Okay, now let's look at this melody again. So what I'm now looking for in order to deal with inessential notes, in order to avoid a harmonic rhythm that's just changing in all these quavers or eighth notes, is to think, well, which of these notes need to be harmony notes? Which of these notes need to be inessential notes? Okay, let's see if we can kind of whiz through. Well, the F sharp is going to be probably a harmony note that belongs to chord one. That would be a sensible place for this to begin. This could be a passing note, an unaccented passing note because it's between the beat. This A belongs to chord one. So F sharp and A are harmony notes. The G sharp is a passing note. This B could also be a passing note because C sharp belongs to chord one. Okay, D could be an upper auxiliary note. So upper auxiliary note. And the C sharp is the harmony. So you see what's happening in the first bar here. The F sharp, the A, and the two C sharps all belong to chord one. They're all harmony notes. And these three notes, the G sharp, the B, and the D, are inessential notes. 
two passing notes and an upper auxiliary note. So I can put all of that under one chord. I mean, I can move the chord around if I want to do something like start in this position and then move to different inversions of the chord. I could do that. So there's room for movement of some kind if you want, but essentially one chord fits the bar. Now, I could change the chord, so I could start on chord one, and then I could change to chord five. And it wouldn't change anything because C sharp would belong to chord five, D still an upper auxiliary. So you see there are possibilities to change the chord, to have a slow moving harmonic rhythm or a slightly faster one, but we don't have to harmonize every single note and get this kind of manic change in the harmony. And it's an area that um, I realized causes an awful lot of confusion when people write to me to ask advice or they send me some harmony or some composition. I frequently find that, you know, they're saying to me, well, it just sounds a bit you know, rubbish. What's wrong with it? And I frequently find it's a misunderstanding of inessential notes that's caused them to put chords on every single note in the melody. And the harmonic rhythm is just too quick. And as soon as you slow the harmonic rhythm down and recognize the inessential notes, suddenly it's got a much calmer flow to it and everything's much more convincing. Okay, well, we could go on. I mean, you could, you could have a chord five there if you wanted to, or you could stick with the with a chord one. And then, you know, how do we decide on the chords? Well, that's in a sense a, a separate issue, but you look at the C sharp and you think, well, what does C sharp belong to? Well, C sharp's at the top of chord one, isn't it? It's the middle of a chord three. That's quite a dramatic chord in a minor key. Chord three is an augmented chord. And C sharp's at the bottom of chord five. So one and five are the most likely options. Three is a less likely option, simply because it's an augmented chord in a minor key, but it's a possibility. So as long as you've got your harmony notes belonging to the chord, then your inessential notes will also function. Okay, now in the next bar, just for ease of explaining the inessential notes, we could get the harmony quite simple and we could do that. Now, why have I decided to change the chords here. Well, F sharp and F sharp both belong to chord one. E sharp and E sharp don't belong to chord one. And I can't justify all that pile of notes, E sharps and D sharps as inessential notes in relation to chord one. So if you can't do that, you'll have to change the chord. Whereas if I change to chord five, then the two E sharps belong to chord five. So what then is happening in this bar or this measure this is an upper auxiliary note, and this is a lower auxiliary note. You see how that works? So in the second bar, the second measure, I've got F sharp with a chord one, an upper auxiliary coming back to the F sharp. Then I'm moving to chord five, so E sharp belongs to chord five. The D sharp's a lower auxiliary, going back to the E sharp. Okay, now when you come to the next bar, you could say, oh, this is the kind of slowest moving bar. So I could just put chords under each of those crotchets or quarter notes. So I could go something like five, one, one, five. I could do something more interesting than that. I could use a chord six in there with one of the F sharps, for example. It doesn't really matter. We're not fundamentally worrying about the choice of chords other than to find chords that fit. So I could do something quite straightforward. I could do something else and it's another little sort of trick with the inessential notes that we haven't yet talked about. I could treat G sharp and F sharp as appoggiaturas. Okay, so what's an appoggiatura? It's a leaning note and a leaning note that goes by step into the next note normally, and it takes half the value of itself plus the next note. So if you were to think of the F sharp as a minim, well, we divided that minim into two crotchets, okay, between the G sharp and the F sharp. So what I could now do is treat the G sharp as an appoggiatura, maybe using a chord one, 
treat the F sharp as an appoggiatura, maybe using chord five. So I get one, five. So you see how that works quite nicely as well by using them as appoggiaturas. Does that sound better than separate chords for each note? Sounds all right, but it's just a, a little bit more expressive, isn't it? Actually treating them as a poggiatura. So you get the idea that that's how that would work. And they're kind of resolving by step onto notes that belong to the chord, but the appoggiaturas themselves are dissonant. Okay, well, where are we going to go next if we've done chord five there? Well, for the sake of argument, let's take a chord six that would fit with F sharp and D, making this a passing note. Okay, it's coming on that beat, isn't it? So I've got chord six, and then that's coming on a beat. So it's an accented passing note there. Um, for argument's sake, I could have a chord four here, in which case this is an accented passing note. B belongs to chord four, so that's a harmony note. B at the end of the bar obviously also belongs to chord four. A sharp is a lower auxiliary note, but because it's A sharp and that's not in the key of F sharp minor, we call that a chromatic lower auxiliary note. Okay, so if you want to do something that's just moving a semitone down instead of a tone down, you can have a chromatic one. So what have I got in this bar, this measure? Chord six, accented passing, onto D that belongs to chord six. Then I'm going to a chord four with an accented passing, going to B which belongs to the chord. A sharp, chromatic lower auxiliary note, rather fun, isn't it? Back to a harmony note. And then I'm heading for a cadence, which could be a sort of standard, maybe 1C, 5 or 5, 7 to a 1. What am I doing there if I do that? Well, A's belong to the 1C. This is an upper auxiliary note because we're going up one and coming back. G belongs to the harmony notes, to the harmony, to the chord. F sharp's a passing note. E sharp belongs to the chord, the 5 7 chord. And F sharp is an anticipatory note. Anticipatory note. Okay, so there you've got a G sharp, sorry, the F sharp here anticipating the F sharp that belongs to chord one in the last bar, the last measure. So 1C, upper auxiliary note, back to a harmony note, 5 7. The G sharp's a harmony note, the F sharp's a passing note, the E sharp's a harmony note, the F sharp is an anticipatory note of the final F sharp. So hopefully that gives you a kind of insight into how you would look at a melody that's quite busy like this that you might have written or it might be somebody else's melody you're trying to harmonise, how to think of chords that would fit, that's not been our prime purpose in this video, but finding chords that fit, but justifying every single note. Every single note in that melody, even though it's busy, is either a harmony note or it's an inessential note. So inessential notes do a great deal to bring music to life. So if you're writing a melody in conjunction with some chords, think about using them, because if you don't, it can sound a bit bland, you know, a little bit plain. Um, but if you do use them, you've got to make sure they're all kind of musically legal. All right, so don't end up with random notes that don't belong to the chord, but are not inessential notes, because they're the ones that are going to stick out like a sore thumb. So a little exercise there in F sharp minor, dealing with inessential notes. <laughs>